Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing cellular death. Now, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us and it allows us to continue making these videos for free. So with that being said, let's discuss cellular death by discussing or having a recap over cellular injury. Now, we already know that our cells have an ability to adapt to certain levels of stress and they do that through certain mechanisms like hyperplasia, hypertrophy, and metaplasia, just to name a few. There are many other ways that cells also also adapt to stress and if a level of stress is too much if the level of stress upon a cell exceeds the ability of a cell to handle that stress cellular injury is going to occur that's essentially what happens when you have too much stress for the cell to handle it cannot adapt and essentially you are going to injure the cell there are many different ranges of injury and they depend on the type of injury, the severity of the injury, as well as the type of cell itself, which we've talked about in previous lectures that you can see on our YouTube channel. But one thing to remember is that cellular damage usually occurs in two stages. In the first stage, you have the reversible stage where it's characterized by cellular swelling. A cell is essentially going to expand and swell up in size. That's the first stage. The second stage is the irreversible stage in which you have a hallmark of membrane damage. Essentially, it can be cellular membrane but also the mitochondrial membrane and the lysosomal membrane and remember in the mitochondrial membrane you have cytochrome c and in the lysosomal membrane you are housing enzymes that can break down the cell both of these or all three of these being damaged will cause the cell to break and essentially not be able to go back to normal these are the two main types of stages we have discussed them extensively uh, we've discussed the pathology as well as the mechanisms of how cellular injury leads to cellular damage etc in certain videos specific videos on our YouTube channel for both reversible and irreversible damage. So I highly recommend you check them out. This is the main thing you need to remember. Re reversible cellular injury essentially can be reversed, right? You can go backwards. But when you get to the irreversible cellular injury stage, you will only progress forward to cellular death. That is the simplified uh, mechanism, I guess you could say, a simplified pathway of cellular injury. Now, when it comes to cellular death, you got to remember that the hallmark or the morphologic hallmark is the loss of the nucleus. When a cell loses a nucleus, you know that cell has died because the nucleus is where everything is going on. Now, the process for this is very simple, and I'm just going to simplify it so you guys remember it. It's not super high yield. It's something you should know, and you should just have in the back of your mind. So it's better to see it than to never see it and then get blindsided. So the first step process is pycnosis. Pycnosis is when you have a normal cell, and let's say this is the nucleus, right? In pycnosis, the nucleus is essentially going to shrink. That's what is going on. You see how this nucleus is pretty big. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you guys can tell the difference. The nucleus is going to shrink. Then you have karyorexis. In karyorexis, that nucleus that shrank, okay, is going to then break up into smaller little pieces like this. Okay, and then finally you have karyolysis in which this smaller uh, nucleus, right, that's been broken into smaller pieces essentially gets degraded and that's what you have, right, like barely any nuclear remnants that you can see. That's the main mechanism or that's the main process of cellular death. Now when it comes to the mechanism, there are two main things you should remember. The first mechanism is necrosis and the second me mechanism is apoptosis. All of these are going to have specific videos for themselves. We're just going to go do a quick overview of both of these mechanisms so you guys have an understanding so that in the next videos, the upcoming videos, you will know what is going on. You've been exposed to it already. And with that being said, let's just dive right in and talk about cellular necrosis. Cellular necrosis is when you have cells dying on a large scale. Okay, this is a kind of a macro level death, right? So I like to think of necrosis as macro death anomics, right? Like macroeconomics, macro death anomics. Okay, it's on a larger scale. That is what is happening. Oh man, I spelled that wrong. There we go. Macro death anomics. It's happening on a large scale, okay? And essentially, exogenous injury to a cell can result 
can cause uncontrollable cellular degradation. And remember, normal cellular enzymes, normal enzymes that are there, that are in the cell, actually get inactivated during this part, okay? During this type of injury or cell death, the normal cellular enzymes that are usually re like responsible for controlling death, especially the apoptotic enzymes, the enzymes that control the cell cycle, are now being inactivated because of this exogenous injury or exogenous stressor that's being placed upon a cell. Now, this could be due to underlying pathological process that's going on. This could be happening because of a hemorrhage, and that's going to lead to a large-scale die-off, right, or an ischemia that's happening on a large scale that's causing necrosis to happen, let's say, in the brain, right? That's an exogenous injury. It's not happening within the cell. It's happening kind of outside of the cells, and it's happening on a large scale, right? It's not just one or two smaller cells. It's, it's on, a, like, a large tissue uh, scale. The key principles to remember is that you're going to have the release of intracellular components, right? They should not be releasing, they should not be leaving out, and that's kind of going hand in hand with the membrane damage that also occurs, right? How are intracellular components going to be released? Because of membrane damage. And remember, that's the irreversible stage of cell death or cell damage. You also are going to have the presence of inflammation. Often, these intracellular components will lead to inflammation as well because they're going to activate nearby cells, and those cells are going to realize, hey, this is abnormal. We need to call in the big guns like our white blood cells, okay, like the neutrophils and lymphocytes and the macrophages, and get them here so that they can take care of what's going on, right? And that's going to lead to inflammation occurring in that area. Now, there are several different types of necrosis, like coagulative necrosis, liquefactive, caseous. There are many different types and we talk about all of them in the upcoming video so I highly recommend you guys watch that video it'll really give you a good clear picture of what necrosis cellular necrosis is and how it looks like on the pathology and the histology sites right so you can see it you can visualize it and you can understand what's going on and why it's happening the second thing we're going to talk about right now is cellular apoptosis now remember cellular necrosis was on a macro scale right it was a large large death cellular apoptosis is on a smaller scale it's essentially cellular suicide right and it's reliant on ATP you need ATP to essentially cause cellular apoptosis remember cellular apoptosis is programmed cell death and how is it programmed through the genetics that is how a cell knows that it's gonna die it's already pre-programmed if something happens, if there is an insult or something that is not right with the cell's cell cycle, right? The cell knows, you know what, it is time for me to die because I am not functioning properly. That is encoded genetically. It can be caused by the cell itself, but it can also be caused by other cells, right? So let's say you have a cell that is multiplying too much, okay? These cells can maybe figure out, hey, look, I'm multiplying too much. This is not right, and this cell could kill itself off, and thus preventing these cells from growing. That's one mechanism, like an auto-feedback loop. But because it's already made these cells, these cells can continue to grow, and nearby cells or other cells can realize, hey, these cells are not right, and it can send macrophages and neutrophils and lymphocytes. Okay, and these white blood cells can end up killing these cells off through other mechanisms. All this has already been discussed, so we're not going to dive too deep into the mechanisms of how it happens. Usually, uh, this can involve a single cell or a small group. That's why I'm talking about these types of cells, right? It can be a single cell or a small group of cells. And an example, a key or a hallmark example of cellular apoptosis is endometrial shedding during menses, right? During endometrial shedding, you know that the endometrium, like that this is the endometrial lining normally, right? During the menstrual period or the menstrual cycle, the endometrium starts to grow, grow, grow. And then after a while, it's going to hit a certain point that if it does not have a viable egg that's been fertilized, implanted within its, you know, uh, within the endometrium, you're going to see shedding happening. And that is because of apoptosis. This shedding right here is because the cells of the endometrium are programmed to die if they do not receive continuous progesterone, okay? So this is all program cell death, a.k.a. apoptosis. Okay, this is just one example. Another example uh, is CD8 T cell, CD8 positive T cell mediated cell death. That is an external cell, right? And uh, this is 
an example of an external cell causing cells to die. That is very important. Remember, we talked about how uh, the, the genetic programming of cellular apoptosis can be caused by a cell itself, like in the example of endometrium and the endometrium shedding during menses. Well, the other mechanism of genetic programming for cellular apoptosis is other cells inducing apoptosis upon one cell. And one example of this is the CDA toxic cytotoxic T cells. These cytotoxic T cells can actually cause other cells to die. Right? And then finally, you have embryogenesis. In embryogenesis, you have cells growing and essentially getting killed off to make sure a fetus or an embryo is growing into a fetus properly. All of this is because of apoptosis. With that being said, we have now covered cell death and cell injury, essentially. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate your support. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I hope this was helpful, and we'll see you real soon.